We're going to look specifically in this video at economic and social developments, specifically economic developments that took place, uh, place sorry, during the Russian Civil War, specifically, you know, 1918 to 1921. And we're going to talk about a number of key things. We're going to specifically start by looking at state capitalism, the role that state capitalism played when it comes to, you know, the 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 effect, effectively the saving of the russian economy we're going to talk about war communism during the russian civil war and how effective that was and the methods that were used to implement war communism and then we're going to finish off by looking at the idea of red terror which is more of a social development that took place following the assassination attempt of of vladimir lenin on the 30th of august 1918 so like i said we're going to start by looking at state capitalism so Lenin's idea, Lenin's policy of state capitalism was was generally seen to be a pragmatic way of responding to the problems that were faced by Russia in 1918. Don't forget, Russia had been through effectively two revolutions. Okay, two revolutions. It had been through one world war. World war. And now it's also going through one civil war one civil war so you know there's a, there's a lot of problems going on specifically the world war you know caused a huge amount of problems which then led to the revolutions which then led to the civil war so some kind of economic policy had to be implemented in order to, to for the economy to survive effectively and then he believed uh, that by nationalizing industry okay he'd be making government more efficient and making the economy more efficient as well more uh, economy the economy effi uh, more efficient these are two important points okay because uh, you know he needs to have a, a more efficient running economy in order to deal with the economic problems that were being faced in 1918 okay and he was also able to employ experts to run the economy he believed that the economy should be run by these experts who you know have um a lot of understanding of the economic crises that were taking place and so therefore with these things being you know taken into consideration under state capitalism control was nationalized uh, sorry control of nationalized industries sir, were centralized okay so we have a centralized economy all nationalized industries were run by what, what was known the uh ves i'm gonna have to pronounce this uh vesenka okay the vesenka I, I, you know how bad I am at pronouncing, uh, pronouncing Russian words uh, that aren't actually written in uh, in Cyrillic. So the Vesenka was effectively the supreme Soviet of the Rus uh, of the national economy, and these were just an, an, a group of economic experts, okay, that were put in charge of running the national economy. Uh, it was used to re-establish worker discipline, to ensure that factories were being properly managed and to coordinate economic production to improve efficiency this was important going into going into the russian civil war as we talked about in the last lesson the bolsheviks won the russian civil war mainly because of this centralization of economic production and this efficient discipline that was taking place within the red army and within the workers Okay, so these three goals were achieved using two different methods. Okay, so they offered higher pay to more productive workers, which increased incentives. If you were more, that's terrible handwriting. I'm very sorry. If you were more productive, if you were a more productive worker, you were given higher pay. So that gave an incentive for those workers who were not as um, productive to, you know, to book their ideas up effectively and to become more uh, efficient and more productive. They also placed the factories under the control of well-paid specialists. OK, and it should be noted that not all factories were nationalized, it's, but the vast majority were. And the smaller factories were the ones that were not nationalized. Smaller factories were seen to uh, to run better and to be more effective if they were controlled by either the workers in a in a worker co-op system so worker co-op system co-op 
or if they were just simply given back to the capitalists and let the capitalists run. And because and because they were only smaller factories, they, you know, it wasn't as much of a big deal if they were being given back to capitalists just to run how they wanted it to be run. Or if they were to be controlled by workers democratically in a worker co-op. So this brings us to the idea of war communism, which was probably the, you know, the most significant economic policy that was taking place during the Civil War. The Soviet regime needed to reorganise its economy to survive the Russian Civil War. The Russian Civil War, don't forget, was not a foregone conclusion at its start, when it began. I'm trying to do an underline here. Uh, when it began, it wasn't a foregone conclusion. You know, Many believed that the, the, Rus the Red Army wasn't going to win. So uh, a red, red victory wasn't inevitable. Red victory was not inevitable. So it's important to note that, you know, the economic, on the econ economic side of things, uh, a number of things had to be done, a number of policies had to be implemented in order to ensure that the, the Reds were going to win. So the economy needed to meet the needs of the war economy, because this was again a, a war, a, quite a long war as well. And by May 1918, the economy was on the brink of collapse. Don't forget, as we looked at in the, you know, up here, if we looked at it up here, Russia had gone through one world war, two revolutions effectively, and now is going into a, a civil war. So it has to be noted that the economy wasn't in the best of shapes. There were things like, you know, a, a high increase of, uh, there was a lot of hyperinflation, okay. Um, effectively, the economy was about to collapse. It was on the brink. So therefore, government intervention was necessary to ensure that the economy uh, would survive and thus the regime. So this is why we have the implementation of war communism. And the idea behind war communism was threefold. So the first idea was to ensure that high levels of industrial production were being met, so that we have high levels of industrial production. It was to ensure that there was an efficiently allocated um, workers. Workers were allocated efficiently uh, to, you know, to implement the needs of the economy. And also to increase and maintain food production for everyone. So this was, you know, soldiers and workers alike. So that's what's really important when it comes to the aims of, of war communism. So how was war communism implemented? What were the what were the goals set out in in um, in the implementation of war communism? What were the policies that were introduced? OK, so the first policy, there were six main policies that we can look at here. OK, so we have the taking of grain effectively okay this was done by Cheka squads again russian civil uh, secret police and they went around effectively seizing grain and other foods from the peasantry and from other agricultural workers and in return for nothing effectively they they effectively stole these uh, stole these things and then they would allocate them by rations which became the second policy so the second policy was rationing and the supply commissariat uh, ration foods seized by the by the Cheka, okay, and the largest amounts of foods, the largest rations were given to soldiers and workers, the smallest given to the bourgeois class. So you can sort of see how the 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 sort of class system was flipped on its head from the aristocratic society under the Tsar in in Russia to the to the Soviet society under the USSR, okay. The third policy was involving the abolition of money. And this was less of a, you know, informed policy that was something that Lenin uh, really wanted to achieve, but it was more of a necessity. Because at the beginning, before war communism, at the beginning, uh, in 1918, the government just simply printed money to try and prop up the, the, the economic struggles. However, whenever you print a lot of money, it will eventually lead to inflation, and that inflation can become out of control and turn into hyperinflation. This is what happened in Weimar, Germany in 1923. This is what happened in Zimbabwe not long ago, and this is what happened here in, in, in Russia. So, effectively, the value of the money became worthless. Money became the, the value of the money became less than the paper that it was printed on. And so workers and soldiers were, instead of paid through money, they were paid through rations. So it effectively led to the abolition of money. 
We also see the abolition of trade, specifically private trade. Okay, so private trade was made illegal. And we also see a complete nationalised economy. All businesses were taken over by the state. This is a development from the state uh, state capitalism uh, model that was introduced by Lenin and moves into the war communism model, which was the getting rid of all private trade, getting rid of um, any kind of private ownership of business, nationalised under the government. And then finally, workers were assigned uh, to either work or fight. Okay, so we have a, a, a policy of conscription for workers. So you can either, you know, you'll either be allocated on based off your ability to work or based off your ability to fight in the civil war. And it should be noted that war communism, it was was relatively successful. Relatively successful in achieving its aims. Okay, in achieving its aims. Now this is what's an, this is an important thing to note, is that war communism was successful technically by way of because you know it was the Reds that eventually won the Russian Civil War. So you know it kept the the Red Army supplied. Okay, so it kept so it kept the Red Army uh, running, kept the Red Army army running. However. It should be noted that it did lead to economic collapse and political crisis. So it did eventually, so eventually, eventually led to economic collapse. Economic collapse and plus political crisis. So it's sort of a uh, so the you know the success and failure of war communism was a sort of you know a bit backhanded it was very successful technically just by way of it being able to keep the red army running during the civil war but it did eventually lead to an economic collapse and political crisis in the end so if i'm sure we'll get i'll go through an essay looking at whether or not war communism was successful and we'll talk about it in a little bit more detail but it should be noted that its main aim of being able to you know s supply the war effort it was it was successful in that regard before we finish i want to talk about red terror which is the idea uh the, which was the uh, the social unrest that took place during this time okay so following an assassination attempt on the 30th of August 1918 on Lenin, okay, a, a campaign of violence then began, a crackdown on, on, any, um, on any dissenters, on any, on any uh, opposition. As the Bolshevik control spread across Russia moving into 1921, okay, uh, violence followed. And this was known as the Red Terror. And... The Bolsheviks used both the Cheka, the secret place, and the Red, and the I'm going to use capital R here, and the Red Army, to achieve this Red Terror. Okay, it was a, to 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 put down any kind of uh, any any kind of uh, opposition or dissent to the Bolshevik authority. Now, not. Very much is effectively known about red the you know the impact of red terror because the official estimates put the deaths at the hands of the Cheka during this period at around thirteen thousand. However, most historians would put the figure higher at around half a million. So, you know what we know about how you know the impact of the red terror is a little bit more uh, is a little bit more up for historical debate because official estimates do um, do differ. So this was effectively the ways in which the economy was organised during the civil war. So this is the the, the organisation of the economy up to 1921. And we're going to move on in the next lesson to have a look at the organisation of the of society and the and social economic factors after 1921 before we move on to the foreign policy the of the newly formed Soviet Union.